The last part of section one, we're gonna discuss some patterns that organic chemists discovered after they began to isolate and work out the structures of a large number of organic molecules. So in the 1800s, organic chemistry was a very different science from the way it is now. Much of the 1800s organic chemistry was spent basically purifying individual molecules from various sources and then doing experiments to work out what the chemical structure of those molecules would be and then starting to mix those molecules with other chemicals in order to have them do chemical reactions. Now, what they discovered in the course of doing all this as they generated a huge amount of data, they discovered, one, that there were patterns in the structures of molecules, of carbon-containing molecules. They also discovered that when a molecule had a particular given structural pattern, very often that molecule would behave chemically in the same way as other molecules that had that structural pattern. So in other words, molecules with similar structure patterns functioned in a similar way. So what they did was they organized the molecules according to those structural patterns and they called those structural patterns functional groups. Groups of atoms with a pattern of structure that function in the same way. And it turns out that this has become a very convenient way to study organic chemistry. And in fact, our course is going to be organized in this way. We're going to look at pattern by pattern the properties of those functional groups. Now, one of the things that you're going to need to do is memorize the functional group structures and names. You are also going to need the skill of identifying functional groups in larger, more complex molecules that might have multiple functional groups and large skeletons. We're going to be providing practice problems in those areas, and you will be tested on that. Okay, now, on the following pages, we're going to list the common functional groups and some information about each group, okay? This is basically something you're going to have to sort of study and begin to memorize. The first set of functional groups we're going to look at are what we call hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are molecules that contain only carbon and hydrogen atoms. They generally differ based on whether they contain multiple bonds or not. So just very quickly going through these because of course you can read our, our most fundamental type of carbon organic molecule is called an alkane. Alkanes are molecules that contain only carbons and hydrogens and only single bonds. Later on when we discuss uh, bonding theory, we're going to see that all the carbons in a hydrocarbon, uh, sorry, in an alkane are going to be sp3 hybridized. Now, um, we often have abbreviations for our functional group structures. So for example, we typically use the letter capital R to represent a carbon molecule, typically an alkane, although actually it can also be a larger, more complex structure. So an alkane can often be represented as sort of a whole bunch of alkane-like stuff connected at the end to a hydrogen. The next type of hydrocarbon functional group is what we call the alkene. An alkene has a carbon-carbon double bond. So it looks like this. Um, again, uh, sometimes we can write these in sort of a condensed way, saying R, CH, double bond, CH, R. Um, we're going to talk about or look at condensed structures in a, the next chapter. And there is another term that is sometimes used for a carbon-carbon bond. It's called an olefin. That's more of an industrial term, but occasionally we encounter it in the names of reactions and things like that. The third type of hydrocarbon we're going to 
be discussing this year is what's called the alkyne. So notice alkane, alkene, alkyne. An alkyne has a carbon-carbon triple bond. Now there's two types of alkynes. One is an alkyne where the triple bond is at the end of a carbon chain and therefore has a hydrogen directly attached. We call that a terminal alkyne. There are also alkynes where the carbon-carbon bond is in the middle of a carbon chain. And I actually didn't draw a picture of that here, but that would have R, carbon-carbon triple bond, different R. Okay, and we call that an internal alkyne. And again, when we get to alkynes, we're gonna see that in some situations, terminal alkynes behave differently from internal alkynes. The last type of hydrocarbon group that we're gonna discuss is called an arene or aromatic ring. Now, there are a number of different aromatic rings, but the most typical one, like the general basic example of them, is this molecule, a ring of six carbons, double bonds alternating around the ring, one hydrogen attached on each, which is not explicitly drawn. And we call that molecule benzene. That is a structure and a name you are going to have to memorize. We are going to use it a lot. So we're going to see that benzene rings can be abbreviated as AR with H, but even more typical, when we do naming, we're going to see that this ring, as just sort of attached to something else, is often called a phenyl ring. And so uh, benzene is a phenyl ring with the hydrogen, it directs directly to a hydrogen. Now, one of the important things that I need to note, it's in bold right here. Although we draw this ring with having double bonds, these double bonds don't behave like alkene double bonds. They behave differently. In fact, in second semester, one of the first chapters we cover is going to talk about the special properties of aromatic rings and their special double bonds. The next type of functional groups are going to be, are going to have alkane-like chains that have one substituent that has a different atom from carbon. So typically it's one of the non-metals in the upper right-hand corner like oxygen, nitrogen, uh, sulfur, chlorine, things like that. These are called heteroatoms. In this section, we're going to use a term here. We're going to call talk about what we call an alkane carbon. By alkane carbon, what we're going to mean is that a carbon that has only single bonds and only carbon hydrogen atoms directly attached to it. No heteroatoms, no double bonds. Okay, so let's look at our um, four different typical uh, heteroatom substituted functional groups. The first one is called an alcohol. It's an alkane type carbon that has an OH directly attached. Now the OH is a separate piece. It's often called a hydroxyl group, but the functional group is called alcohol. So don't get those confused. If you're asked what is the functional group, the correct answer is alcohol. This can often be represented with, here's the carbon chain, and then the OH is attached. Related to alcohols are what are called ethers. So if we look at an alcohol as, having a car, as being an oxygen with a carbon group on one side and a hydrogen on the other, an ether is an oxygen where the carbon group is on one side and the hydrogen has been replaced with another alkane type carbon group. This would be abbreviated carbon group, O carbon group, R-O-R. We're gonna discuss ethers at the very end of this semester. We're gonna see that for the most part, they're pretty unreactive and we usually use them as solvents and things like that, but there are some special ones that are more reactive. Next type of functional group we're gonna look at is the amine. Amines are alkane type carbons usually, although they can be somewhat different. Al uh, carbons with a nitrogen single bond attached. 
Now, the interesting thing about amines is that they can have different numbers of carbon groups attached to the nitrogen and still be called amines. So we can, for example, have a carbon attached to a nitrogen with two hydrogens, that would be this one. We can have a carbon attached to a nitrogen with another carbon group and only one hydrogen, that would be like this. Or we can have even a nitrogen which has one, two, three different carbon groups attached. When we discuss amines in second semester, we will see that we are going to further categorize these amines, but they are all treated as amines. The last type of uh, monofunctional or basically um, alkyl with heteroatom group attached is what's called the alkyl halide. Alkyl halides contain alkane type carbons with halogens directly attached. Now here's something interesting and sort of new for you guys. It turns out that we have a special symbol in organic chemistry for halogen atoms. We represent halogen atoms. If we're just talking about here's a general some halogen atom can really probably be any of these four halogen atoms. We use the symbol X. There is no element that has the symbol X by itself. So this is a very common organic chemistry abbreviation. If you see a structure with an X drawn as one of the atoms in that structure, it probably means there's a halogen of some type attached there. Halogens are uh, the atoms that are located in the second to last column of the periodic table. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. The last set of functional, simple functional groups that we're going to learn for first semester are what are called the carbonyl compounds. These functional groups contain a carbon to oxygen double bond. Turns out that substructure of carbon double bonded to oxygen is called a carbonyl group. So what we see here is we see functional groups that have carbonyl groups and then there are other specific things attached directly to that carbonyl carbon. The first one we're going to look at is the aldehyde. An aldehyde is a molecule that has carbon on one side and a hydrogen directly attached to the carbonyl carbon. So our abbreviation for this is kind of interesting. Here's the carbon group, and then to abbreviate this sort of branching Y-shaped structure, we write CHO. Now, related to aldehydes are ketones. Ketones have carbon groups on both sides of the carbonyl. Both of the bonds attached directly to the carbonyl have carbon groups on them. So they're very similar to aldehydes, just instead of having one hydrogen, we now have two carbon groups. Now the abbreviation for this we're going to talk about later is complicated and not very useful. We don't do this very often, but this is what it would look like. The next functional group we're going to look at is the carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid contains a carbonyl that has an OH, a hydroxyl group, directly attached to the carbonyl carbon. Now, in this case then, this is not an alcohol. Remember that an alcohol has to have an alkane type carbon with only C's and H's and single bonds attached to the OH. This has a double bond O, so it's something different. We call it a carboxylic acid. The abbreviations for carboxylic acid, there's actually two of them. One is this, COOH. The other one is CO2H. And both of these are very commonly used. The next functional group is the ester. The ester is similar, is related to the carboxylic acid in the way that an ether is related to an alcohol. It's basically a carboxylic acid where the hydrogen on the OH has been replaced by another carbon group. So we have C double bond O, oxygen, and then carbon group. The um, abbreviation of that is going to be like this. 
The last functional group that we're going to learn for this semester is the amide. And the amide is a carbonyl that has a nitrogen directly attached. That nitrogen can have two hydrogens, it can have one carbon group and one hydrogen, or it can have two carbon groups. So those are the three abbreviations that we see here. We're going to talk more about the carbonyl functional groups in second semester, but they will be part of our discussions at the end of first semester. That concludes our lecture material for section one.